Welcome back. This is The Firm. And now let's get to that exclusive interview. The constitutional challenge to the Competition Act. A word of caution for the private equity industry. A possible solution for the Thomas Cook problem. An explanation to the Tesco surprise. And the upset created by Compat's DLF order. CCI Chairman Ashok Chavla speaks to Pais Vinayupadhyay on all of this and more. Listen in to this exclusive interview. The Competition Act is facing a constitutional challenge arising out of the auto parts case. The petitioners have challenged the co-location of investigative and enforcement functions within the CCI and also that members not present in the hearings end up signing the final order. I think the, uh, the larger issue uh, which is coming out in, 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 in some of these things is that whether uh, the Competition Commission as it is structured today by the Act of Parliament, uh, whether it's purely a body of experts or is it also doing enforcement and regulation which therefore makes it a sort of quasi-judicial body. Uh, and the, the challenges to those functions uh, given to the Commission by Parliament. Uh, now, if the if the regulation of the market is to be done by the Competition Commission, then it is obvious that in the process of regulation, where there are violations of the regulation, there will be penalties will visit those enterprises and those companies. And therefore, there will have to be uh, a, an element of deciding whether a violation has taken place or not and what is the, therefore, the penalty on those. I think that is the larger issue. On the other issue, which you mentioned whether members sign the orders or not, let me very clearly say that the way the, the act is uh, structured, the, all the members, as many members are, as, are, uh, as are in existence at a point in time, and the act provides for a maximum of chairperson plus six, that is total seven persons, they all have to sit together and bank to hear a matter and decide it. And all those who have heard a matter and continue to be in the employment of the Commission sign those orders, whether they sign the majority order or they are free to write their notes of dissent. But it is not as if somebody hears a matter and then chooses neither to be a part of the majority nor part of the dissent. That is not the case. I do not think that is correct. Due process apart, industry is also perturbed by the precedents being set by the CCI in its recent orders. One such is what came out in Kotak's filing for a 15% non-controlling interest in MCX stock exchange. Competition experts questioned the need for filing for such a transaction in the first place. And then CCI's unclear order made matters worse. The Competition Act exempts a transaction from filing requirements if it doesn't meet filing thresholds there is no acquisition of control, the transaction is purely an investment or is in the ordinary course of business. Experts say that Kotak's existing investment in Ahmedabad Commodity Exchange could have prompted the filing as a precautionary measure. But the CCI order doesn't say if this in fact was the reason why the filing exemption didn't apply. A strategic investment, yes, the uh, the uh, regulations say that if it is purely a strategic investment, it is not necessary to fight. But what if, and you refer to yourself to, into that particular case, what if a person makes strategic investment in three or four companies in the same sector? Will he, will that enterprise making that investment be allowed the liberty of not notifying the transaction and not seeking prior approval? Because that strategic investment, it may be below 25 percent, but that strategic investment of 15, 20, 24 percent in three or four companies in the same line of business could materially alter the competitive landscape. So what would your message to the private equity industry be that every time they make a fresh investment in a sector where they are already invested, should they come to the CCI for filing? Because some would say that the filing fees itself are very high. Uh, we have this window, as you may be aware, of pre-filing consultations, which are now also held on substantive issues. So when in doubt, consult the Commission. Despite all this, there will be certain borderline cases. And what I would say is, and what I would suggest to, uh, 
to the enterprises or the equity funds concerned is it's better to err on the side of caution than to have the competition commission visit you with some kind of penalty for gun jumping gun jumping pci's order in thomas cook's case gave a new meaning to that term earlier this year thomas cook board approved sterling holidays acquisition via a multi stage process one transaction related to thomas cook's market acquisition of sterling shares thomas cook disclosed this transaction when it filed with the cci for a scheme of arrangement approval the regulator concluded that this market purchase made by thomas cook before the filing is a violation of section 43a of the competition act the section allows the regulator to impose penalties if parties fail to notify a transaction and this cost thomas cook 1 crore rupees could you help me understand sir what should be the industry's expectation from now on because if it is a market purchase it is difficult for the parties to come to the cci prior to that actual purchase to seek the permission because there is a certain amount of urgency attached to that transaction and not before they make the market acquisition i'm not saying that they should come to us before they make the market acquisition but the point is if it is in some manner linked to the overall sort of transaction or the overall acquisition of shares in another enterprise and let's say uh, i'm not aware of uh, the case that you are mentioning or the details we won't go into that but let's say the board say that okay we will acquire this many shares now then we will do this later etc then it's obviously a linked transaction but yes i get your point there is an issue that if the market purchase requires a certain amount of urgency then whether they need to come prior to that or they need to come immediately thereafter and notify it as part of an integrated transaction etc we will look at those cases and we've also looked at uh, some of the other jurisdictions where they provide for a certain treatment for market purchases what could that treatment be no uh, ma'am this is something which has just uh, been raised what we would do what we would not do i cannot say today another recent order that took industry by surprise was cci's 3 crore rupee penalty order against tesco on 17 december last year tesco applied for fipb approval to acquire a 51% stake in trent hypermarket it filed with the cci on 31st march 2014 Ten days after it signed the joint venture and share purchase agreement with Trent, CCI concluded this to be a late filing by Tesco and held the filing should have been made within 30 days of the FIPB application. I won't go into individual cases and uh, some of them are in appeal, etc. But be that as it may, the the philosophy is that uh, you have to. come to the commission within a certain number of days of having decided what you are going to do and if you have decided and gone let's say in this case to one another regulator and filed your papers then obviously that becomes the trigger because it cannot be that the same material information of a, of a proposed uh, combination cannot be given to the commission now there are two concerns uh, on this front sir When I'm making an application to the FIPB or any statutory regulator, I may be well within the thresholds or exemption thresholds that the Competition Act allows me. That is one. And two, at this stage, I may not need even know what my definitive agreement looks like. Will the CCI waste its time looking at the transactions at different stages? In case there are changes, as could happen. I quite appreciate the point that as you go along. after the filing there could be some changes in terms of the scope in terms of the extent in terms of the numbers well the uh, the regulations provide there is a provision that the parties can come back and say look we have filed these issues with you there is proposed change or there is a certain modification which has taken place okay which doesn't materially alter the the overall architecture or whatever it does even if it does these are the details so we take that on record and that process goes on so the essential principle is that the time gap between your deciding to do something and your coming to the commission 
should be within that period which is prescribed by law and which is considered reasonable. All right, sir. We'll wait for the Supreme Court to give its verdict on this matter. Thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. And this inadvertently turned out to be a competition special. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week.